Hey, how's it going, VG? You're the afternoon step with Josie. And of course, I've got more of hits I lined up for you, so stay tuned for that. But right now, check this song out, man. It's Golden City coming out to do with MDK, ready for your love, right here on Today FM. Tonight, final batch of ballot papers printed and sent to storage center ahead of election. Pre-polling continues in remote areas. And police investigate alleged murder of 12-year-old girl. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. The final batch of 196,000 printed ballot papers have been transported to a secure storage area this morning. The consignment completes the 700,000 ballot papers for the general election. Chanel Sivan has more. The Fijian Elections Office now begins packing polling kits for each polling station. The last of the ballot papers today left the printing factory in Rewai Suva, bound for a warehouse in Lami under police guard on a 24-hour basis. As of now, we have uh, finished the printing and compilation of the ballot papers. Uh, the last batch was just dispatched to our secure facility and you all got to witness that. Uh, as of today, we now have 14,000 books uh, that have been uh, printed, binded and now bound actually and distributed to uh, the pre-poll areas and also we have uh, books that are now going to be put into the ballot boxes for the on the day polling on 17th of September. 715,000 ballot papers have now been printed, bound into 14,000 books. We used a total of 8,770 kilograms of paper in printing the ballot paper. So uh, as a side fact, I think uh, it's interesting to note that and uh, uh, these ballot papers will now be uh, packed into the ballot boxes and the polling equipment that is going to be sent out for 17th of September for polling. The ballot papers will be transported to specific polling venues this week and remain under tight security. Meanwhile, the elections office is looking for an additional 300 staff. A recruitment drive was held in Suva over the weekend. They work on the results. As the results arrive, they do data entry and etc. Uh, etc. Et uh, we had a very encouraging turnout. I'd like to thank all those who came and uh, we managed to take them through the merits based recruitment process, which is uh, a test, a simple aptitude test followed by, uh, well, uh, basically we'll assess on the answers and uh, we will recruit top 300. We expect, uh, we anticipate that about a thousand plus people would have attended. Nine days remain for the elections day. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. And we join Chanel Sivan and the election supervisor Mohammed Sanim live from the elections office. Chanel, what's the latest? Yes, Jackie, there, was, there were a few uh, disruptions in Didia. Uh, with me tonight, we have a supervisor of elections, Mr. Mohammed Sanim. Mr. Sanim, what actually happened in Didia today? Uh, our pre-poll team was not able to reach uh, on the scheduled time because uh, the sea was very rough and the boat, boat took a bit of time to berth. So uh, pre-polling started after 12 midday today. And have you gone back to the, to the four people who were left out in Yasawa? Uh, for the people who were left out, the four people left in Yasawa, uh, the Fijian Elections Office went back to them on Saturday and they have been able to vote. Mr. Sanim, uh, there is confusion uh, am amongst the people uh, out there that the, the electoral team will go back to them if they have missed out on, on uh, a pre-polling. Would you be able to uh, tell us uh, uh, more on that? That's a critical question. Um, just to inform the voters that the Fijian Elections Office will only go back to the areas where voters were not able to vote because we didn't have sufficient materials with us. Uh, we have done most of those areas already and uh, if voters did missed out because they didn't turn up to the venue, uh, we are not able to go back to those venues in pre-poll. 
So you will be only going back to the places where there was a shortage of material. Exactly. Thank you very much uh, you. Uh, for joining us tonight. That was the Supervisor of Elections, uh, Mr. Mohammed Sanim. Back to you, Jackie. Thanks for the update, Chanal. Pre-polling continued in many parts of the country today, and military personnel joined the queue. The Queen Elizabeth Barracks in Mbosuva was one of the locations earmarked for pre-polling. Chanal Sivan again with this report. Hundreds of military officers stationed at the Queen Elizabeth Barracks have cast their votes through pre-polling. They lined up like any other voter from 8 a.m. today. Hundreds of military personnel here at the Queen Elizabeth Barrack in Nambua Suva are exercising their right to vote in returning Fiji to democracy after seven and a half years. Pre-polling began here in Nambua at 8 a.m. and has closed at 6 p.m. And it will open again tomorrow at 8 a.m. for those who haven't voted today. I think the process was really easy. Uh, and I feel really good about uh, voting today. Mose Selatu says he waited seven years for this day and being part of the elections process is a personal achievement for him. Latu is urging all registered voters to understand how important each vote is. Yeah, I feel uh, good, I feel happy that I've already casted my vote. We've been uh, waiting for a long time. Yeah, I just want to remind them to just the right uh, candidate, the right party. Pre-polling is being conducted in many remote parts of Fiji. A lot of these places have geographical challenges. Election Supervisor Mohamed Sanim says pre-polling staff had problems reaching their designated areas in the Eastern Division today. Today we have had uh, slight problems with the tide again and rough seas in the uh, Eastern Division. However, uh, we have communicated the message across to the affected areas and uh, we will continue polling as usual. Um, and uh, so far we've had a good turnout, averaging some 75 plus percent. So. Um, and as we go through this week, uh, we, we anticipate the same trend to continue and get stronger. And uh, as a build-up to 17th of September. Sanim has reiterated for voters to check their polling venues as we head closer to the election day. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. Pre-polling also continued in the Western Division today, marking the second week of voting in remote areas around the country. Our journalist Christopher Chan travelled to Nawangandamu village in the interior of Nandi. Travelling on narrow, dusty roads, winding up and down mountains until we reached this remote village. Elections officials had just started placing polling signs for voting to start at midday. The village headman Oturanga Nikoro was heralding the announcement about the start of pre-polling. Young and old flock to the community hall to cast their votes. We are happy that the pre-polling was conducted in our village. Before we used to walk or go by van or horse for half an hour from our village to Vunamoli, a place where we normally cast our votes like we have always done. This is Nawangandamu village up in the highlands in the interior of Nandi about an hour's drive or 26 kilometers from the highway at Nawaidomba. A total of 118 people are registered to vote from this village. I know that the villagers who have registered to vote here will do it here, while those who registered in Longi will do so there. We spoke to a few villagers after they had cast their votes. I can cast my vote so that uh, there's a government that will uh, lead Fiji for the next years. This was the first time I had voted. I went inside and found out that it was an easy process. party which I vote, or the number which uh, I voted for today, I think this party will... Uh, Develop my village. The Nawangandamu Village Hall is one of the 14 pre-polling stations which opened in the Western Division today. Another 17 centres will open tomorrow. Christopher Chand, FBC News. We now go live to our West office and join Christopher Chand from Nandi. Chris, what else can you tell us about pre-polls in the West? 
Like all other divisions, pre-polling started last Wednesday, today being day five. Pre-polling at Nawangandamu was scheduled for four hours, but will continue in other centres this week before ending next Monday with a final ballot at the Bar Correction Centre. A total of 19,857 people are registered to vote during this period. More than 200,000 people are expected to vote from the Western Division on Elections Day. Thanks for that update, Chris. There continues to be impressive turnouts at pre-polling centres in the more isolated parts of Fiji. Watisoni Raikandroka was in Naivurvur village in Tailevu this morning and files this report. The people of Naivurvur village in Verata, Tailevu, were eager to cast their votes this morning, lining up for the chance to be part of the elections process. It's estimated that around 200 people voted here today. For people like Tsonotawake, voting means a better life for the villages. Drinking of uh, clean water, because yeah. uh, the last, uh, last eight years we've been asking for water tanks because of the drought we are facing, eh? but uh, there's no response from, uh, from the government that, uh, at the moment. Eh? We need a uh, government that uh, look after the rural, rural people. Eh? These voters are mainly farmers and fishermen. Most of them say their issues are basic needs like clean water and better roads of the 2014 general elections. Tawake says any government that comes into power shouldn't forget people the grassroots. Government assistance for the development financial uh, to help them in the financial uh, like microfinance and other other assistance from the government. Naiburubur village is one of about 100 other polling stations that were open today. As the pre-polling commences at Naiburubur village this morning, the voters are obvious that their votes today will bring them a better future. What is on your record, Roka? FBC News. Police are treating the death of a 12-year-old girl in Suva as alleged murder. Police spokesperson Ananai Soro says the initial autopsy results have confirmed that the girl did not die naturally. Early yesterday, the deceased was found lying motionless in a house by her father. She was rushed to CWM Hospital but pronounced dead. The deceased child was home alone at the time of the incident with her mother at church and her father out for a haircut. An investigation is underway. Coming up, land development underway at Monikau, Suva for new dip diplomatic missions. How are you doing, Fiji? Yes, indeed, fast approaching. Well, the major bulletin. But before we even talk about the major bulletin, what about my little news flash? Oh my gosh, please don't let him get me started on that again. Getting on the bus yesterday, and then he tells me, brother, move on to the other seat, because we can fit two people where you're sitting. <laughs> hey, you can't blame the dude for being honest, okay? <laughs> There's nothing honest about what he said. Hi, I'm Pivin. And I'm Fina. Your daybreak duo on Gold, Gold FM. FM. From Mondays to Fridays. From 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Hello guys, I am DJ Krish Neel. You can listen to us in Mirchi FM Raftar, Monday to Friday. शाम तीन से लेकर रात सात तक हम आपको रॉक कराएंगे मिर्ची है फैमिली थॉट अब दिल करता है हाले हाले से मैं तो खुद को गले लगा वेलकम बैक दिस इज एफबीसी न्यूज़ Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama has launched the sealing of the first 10 kilometers of Mbutha Bay Road at Nangingi Village on Vanu Levu today. Mbaini Marama says the project is part of the government's commitment to the welfare of the people of the north and a cornerstone of their Look North policy. Mbutha Bay Road will be sealed to at least 30 kilometers, which starts in Nangingi and will soon continue all the way to Kasavu. Mbaini Marama says the daily commuters will directly benefit from this new stretch of road. We have a vision.
to transform the transform the north, to extend to the people of Unulia the same level of services Fijians enjoy on Pikilevu. The total value of the project is estimated at around $40 million and is expected to be fully completed by May 2015. Fiji's gross domestic growth has increased by 4.6% last year. The Fiji Bureau of Statistics report shows GDP valued at $5.3 billion, reflecting the net value of goods and services produced in Fiji. Edwin Nunn takes a look at some of the sectors which contributed to this growth. The positive economic growth in 2013 was driven by six key industries, including financial and insurance activities, transport and storage, construction, manufacturing, ICT, and wholesale and retail trade. The Bureau of Statistics report covers GDP growth over the four-year period between 2009, when there was a negative growth of 1.4%, to 2013, which ended with 4.6% growth. The agriculture industry performed well with a growth of 3.4% driven by increases in sugarcane, yangona, taro and coconut production. Forestry also showed a huge spike, more than 10% growth thanks to pine and mahogany production. There was however a drop, 3.1% to be exact, in the fishing industry because of a drop in harvest from offshore marine fishing. Another big jump in the economy comes from the construction sector, 18.1% due to non-general government activities. The two leading industries in Fiji, manufacturing and wholesale and retail trade, were driven by increases in sugar, garment production, sales of motor vehicles, food and drinks. Edwin Nand, FBC News. The Ministry of Lands and Mineral Resources is carrying out land development in Monikau Suva. Permanent Secretary for Public Service Commission Parmesh Chand says the land is owned by the state and has been given to the Melanesian Spearhead Group to build their missions. To uh, make that land available to our neighboring countries of Vanuatu, Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea to establish their missions there. So. The work you are seeing there is largely preparation of a, a ground site and, and obviously these are projects which the countries might wish to decide to deal with uh, themselves. Meanwhile, the office of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will be relocated to the former government ITC centre at Victoria Parade in Suva. Chan says it is an ideal location for the ministry and it is a standalone building. The ICT centre is now located at Berkeley Crescent in the new data centre building while the administration staff are based at Kelton House. Sports Now and here's Jamie with the latest. Good evening. Coming up after the break, McCoy Bulldogs and Saru Dragons prepare for Vodafone Cup Top 8 Showdown and an update from the Fiji 7 squad. Stay with us for the details. So, you can tell us how many people are doing this. How many people are doing this? You can tell us how many people are doing this. How many people are doing this? How many people are doing this? How many people are doing this? ड्राइवर्स को या फिर पुलिस को नमस्ते फीजी देश की धड़कन रेडियो फीजी टू पर मैं मोहिनी हमारे साथ में शामिल हो जाइएगा दृष्टिकोण प्रोग्राम में हर सोमवार से शुक्रवार तक रात सात से आठ बजे तक दृष्टिकोण प्रोग्राम में Nissan Bulu Benar turun dengan kiri merah mani Bulu Benar kita dorong bawa kiri semua ni lewat Nissan Bulu Benar mana? Enam dua tahun enam tahun lagi wahai kata lau enam mata kain ni lagi enam benda lah nama ini dah sedih. Nombor mereka boleh di belakang ini sorot semua enam lama ni benua mai senggang. Yang bulu ni kau semua yang semua. Nenon tengah orang ni wahai kata lau enam radio fijuan enam dua mai binti nak buang kadi benda. Mai nampak nak kiri semua enam benda mata kain moni tiki nak pakar muka. Nikah ini nama ka? Welcome back to FBC Sports. The Vodafone Fiji 7s team starts its second training camp tomorrow as coach Ben Ryan works on naming his reduced squad. One player who is already assured a place in the side is Osea Kolinisau, who is also set to retain his captaincy. Indra Singh has more on the 7 side. Making final communications before marching into camp for what will be a tough week for these 7 squad members. A lot of games this week and um, I do a lot of in-game coaching 
because there's um, there's two or three things that that we've realised we need to improve upon that can make a drastic improvement as far as our overall performance. So that's that's what we'll spend all week on. Osea Kolinisau is set to be a sure name in Ryan's final list as he looks at giving the Superman the captain's role once again. Unless Osea starts to do something drastically wrong, I can't see him not retaining his captaincy. And what you need though with a good team is not just have one leader and nowhere, no one else. You need a group of leaders and I think I'm starting to see them slowly emerge now. Joining the team this week will be Fertrand Setofano the Cow, while Ryan has also been impressed with seasoned campaigner Nasoni Rocco. This week will be one where I'll start to see the pecking order. I start to see whether Nasoni's one of the guys that I see in the 12 or whether he's the next group down. And same for all the boys. Flying Fijian's mentor John McKee, who has been lending a helping hand at training, is also impressed with what he has seen so far. Look, the, the, the squad looks very strong this year. I mean, the, the, the group of 30 who who training last week and are back in camp today are very... Um, very big and physical squad, probably probably overall a little bit little bit more size than than last year's squad. So that's that's interesting. It's time for these players to show their mental and physical toughness and impress Ryan. After all, those selected will be playing a key role in the national setup for the new season. Interesting, FBC Sports. The McCoy Bulldogs are all set for the Vodafone Top 8 final against the Saru Dragons this Saturday. The team defeated Sambeto Roosters 14-10 in the semi-finals over the weekend and want to continue the winning momentum in the last game of the year. Josephine Navula has the details. After defeating the defending champion Sambeto Roosters in a close game in last week's semi-finals, the McCoy Bulldogs will do whatever it takes to win the final. It's going to be um, a very exciting and uh, as we all know that uh, Makui has tasted uh, victory in 2012 and uh, Saru Dragon is dying to win. And uh, I promise everyone that it's going to be a tough game for both teams. Fiji National Rugby League Operations Manager Joseph O is urging the public to come and witness the raw talent that the sport has to offer in the country. And a kick from Aaron in Dolondai. The public should come down and witness uh, rugby league at its best. We'll have uh, McCoy, who's been uh, the former champions, and uh, Saru is gunning for their first win. Savo adds that there are key players who have shown outstanding performances in their last matches. He'll back to the right. For Saru, they're pretty stacked with uh, resident players like Semi Sitora, we have Tiki Konoke, we have Serev Ralulu as well. While McCoy, you have uh, a new recruit. And I'd like to take my hat off to McCoy's coach, who has been doing a lot of developments on the, with the boys. The final will bring down the curtains to the domestic season on Saturday. Josephine Navula, FBC Sports. With the primary schools in the district football tournament kicking off this week, two teams from Navasa are coming to Suva on a mission. Some of the players will be coming to the capital for the very first time, and excitement is at its peak within the squad. Team official Ronil Chand says after weeks of camp and challenges, the school is ready for the tournament. Uh, this is the uh, best time for Navosa Primary uh, Soccer Association uh, to field uh, the team in the National uh, Primary IDC. And uh, as far as uh, the preparations are going on, uh, since our locality, I mean, the location of the school is uh, very remote, uh, we have uh, very little resources. As uh, far as uh, the boys are concerned, uh, most of them are really excited because. Uh, for some, this is the first time that uh, they would be going to Suva. The primary school's IDC kicks off on Wednesday at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. That was your sports for tonight. Good evening. The Minister for Civil Aviation, Isaid Kayum, says Fiji has a number of air service agreements that are outdated which need to be reviewed and updated. Speaking on For the Record last night, Said Kayum clarified the issue over the stoppage of Salman Airlines flights since July. The Civil Aviation Department has decided to take a particular position. Uh, all we're saying is we've all, always said we want to talk to them, we want to uh, not negotiate through the media. Uh, there are certain clauses under the ASA or Air Services Agreement that needs to be adhered to. And we will need to talk to them about that. Also on the show, Said Kayum refuted claims that the Fiji National Provident Fund is being used as a piggy bank. We have not borrowed any more than any other government. 
But I can tell you one thing, this government through its legal reforms had made the FNPF strong because their report written, written as far back as the early 1990s that said the way that FNPF was being managed, the way that certain individuals were getting 25% rate of return, 18%, 17% rate of return, all the FNPF money would have finished by 2052. You can catch a replay of For the Record this Wednesday on FBC TV at 9.10 p.m. What the time now with Trish. Thanks, Jackie. Looking at today's map, Suva and Savu Savu had scattered showers in the morning with cloudy skies in the afternoon. Lambasa had cloudy skies all throughout day. Nandi, Lotokamba all had fine weather all day. Temperatures Suva 27, Nandi 32, Lotoka and Ba 31, Savu Savu 27, and Lambasa 29. Tomorrow's conditions Suva, Nandi, Lotoka, and Lambasa all should have fair conditions all throughout the day. Savu Savu might have cloudy skies in the morning with fine weather later in the afternoon. Mariners forecast a strong wind warning remains in force for all Kandavu and Batuira passages and southwest Viti level waters, 15 to 20 knots, and rough seas. Image of the day taken at Natewa Bay, courtesy of Helipro BG. Recapping our top stories though, the final batch of printed ballot papers have been transported to a secure storage area today, ahead of next Wednesday's general election. Police are treating the death of a 12-year-old girl in Suva as alleged murder, and Prime Minister Burengen Baini Marama has launched the sealing of the first 10 kilometers of Mbuda Bay Road at Nanyingi Village on Vanua Levu. Now time for the Fijian Speak segment. Delpa will be in Dagba next week. Fiji first. Fiji Fed Party. Benimana Party. Meanwhile, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And to receive the latest headlines on your mobile phone, take subspace FBC to 777. That's news for tonight. Join us again tomorrow. Good evening. Bula. Bula FM na bandwe na sera na wasi ningona ni botara ni sibiti ko bekenda na diwa en na tini na minitie na mipa kuriti ora bengra bena manta no no boka nda na da bitiko ni no no kaloko en e kavende nda bo bimina te wali bimina da bitiko na woni mataka bo kan le bisarti ko no bisere ta leoni na maka ndo bata ti mekina na kena nda rogo di kana maki Bula binaka e o salvilawa ndo bata ki e wona botara na woni vio na kaloko moni tikino ba rogo ka Bula FM, nampak dua, yang sesuai.